Okay, now let's go on with the, another kind of bond that is also found um, in many compounds and these bonds are called as the covalent bonds. Um, covalent bonds are always formed when atoms share electrons to complete their octate which indicates that uh, in this uh, kind of bond uh, or this kind of compound there will be no charge involved. So you have, uh, you have atom, atoms that are sharing. So for example two similar atoms hydrogen and hydrogen both shown to have one electron in the outer shell can gain stability if they get closer and their electron clouds are being shared between the two nuclei. And if that happens, then this region that is shown to you in blue is showing that the two electrons are, are uh, completely, um, if I check the one on the hydrogen on the left, then this electron completes uh, its outer shell. If I look on the one on the right, then this completes it. So hence, um, covalent bonds are, are um, always form between either um, similar atoms or two non-metals. It can be both. So, for example, and, um, and, uh, the one on the top shows you between hydrogen and hydrogen. Uh, both the electrons are being shared and uh, the two dots are then represented as a single dash which represents a bond. Uh, on the one on the bottom shows between fluorine and fluorine. Fluorine, if you recall, is present in group 7. So, it has one less electron to complete it octate. So this uh, one electron that is um, that is out there which is the odd one can be shared and thus complete both the electron clouds individually for each atom but with a shared electron pair. So you can see that these look like they're almost merged together. Um, covalent bonds are much stronger than ionic bonds because in covalent bonds the electrons are actually being shared equally so they have equal strength. The ones we did before were ionic bonds and they actually have less strength than these. Here is, is an example which shows you that uh, covalent bonds can also be formed between two non-metals. So for example, carbon is a non-metal and so is hydrogen. Um, a carbon, if we say the blue ones are belonging to carbon, then notice there are four atoms of these because it's in group 4 and now each of the atom can be shared with another hydrogen atom. So now what happens is the formula can be written as 1 carbon to 4 hydrogen. So uh, either you can have covalent bonds formed between similar atoms or two non-metals. Um, what they both have in common is that both atoms are non-metals. Here is an example of a multiple bond. And let's look at the example of nitrogen. Nitrogen is present in group 5. So it has 5 dots represented by each of the nitrogen. And you can see that to complete the octate, if the two electrons, if the three electrons, like these three simple single ones, are put together and then you form this pattern in which... Um, each of the, the two dots are representing as one bond and then my nitrogen has its own two electrons. So this completes the shell for nitrogen because you can see there's six plus two and another nitrogen is on the vicinity over here. So this way this can complete over here. So pretty much what we're seeing is, uh, let's see, I'll show you what I'm talking about. We're talking about overlap. Notice Let's pick up another color over here. Here is what I'm talking about. So you have an overlap in which you can see that these will form triple bonds uh, because there are, two, there are three different pairs that are shared here. Um, it's very common to have triple multiple bonds when you're looking at a covalent bond. Um, covalent bonds um, are a lot simpler to name, so I want to make sure you don't uh, struggle with these. For covalent bonds, the first step is you must know the number of atoms represents a prefix. So, for example, one is mono, du is di, tri, tetra, penta. So, you would need, need to know all these prefixes. You pretty much uh, write down the, for example, let's give you CO2, something you might be familiar with. Notice both carbon and oxygen are non-metals. Um, they are present on the right-hand side of the periodic table. So in a, if you have to name them, you use the first element's complete name, which is carbon. 
and the second element is going to end in the suffix uh, oxide so this would be oxygen and you're going to end it with the suffix of oxide and now the other thing we want to know is how many atoms of each and you use a prefix for that since there's only one so we're going to ignore that but carbon is has two oxygen so it's called as carbon dioxide that's all you just use the prefix to imply the number of formula um, the for in, in the in the name of the from the formula for example up here we have sulfur and three oxygen so the first element is sulfur trioxide isn't it a lot simpler there are phosphorus and sulfur but there are four of these the suffix for uh, four is tetra so this would be tetra phosphorus trisulfide so here are the steps to um, to um, to help you guide to write the formulas of covalent compounds. Always write the symbols in the order of the element they're in. So for example, if you have C and S, you always write the C first and S after. If you had S and C, then you would do it that way, but probably that won't happen because that there's no such compound. So you always write the first element. For example, writing the formula of carbon disulfide, you'd have to write carbon first and sulfur to second. And disulfide means that it has two sulfur. So again, we'll do an activity in class in which we will go over these. Now I have two more slides to go through over um, something called as a concept of polarity. So before we go on, we will try to understand what is electronegativity. Electronegativity is um, is a concept in which uh, which uh, indicates that the shared electron is not uh, equally present between the two nucleus. So if you have the same um, atom, for example, if you have hydrogen and hydrogen then yes the two electrons that are present in the center will be equally shared and but if you have hydrogen and chlorine as shown over here then this sh this uh, this sh electron uh, pair that is being shared is sort of unequal when you have an unequal distribution that bond is called as polar bond because in an unequal distribution the electro the the atom that has the the, the more atom more electrons is, is stronger as you can call it is the most electronegative atom and it pulls the shared pair towards itself and that is shown by this partial symbol which is positive for hydrogen and negative for chlorine so this results in an unequal um, an uh, unequal uh, distribution. Now, in 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 the in the chart, you were missing this, so I had to add this. Uh, electronegativity increases in this pattern. So there's an error in the book. Make sure you fix that. Um, it increases this way. And in in, remember that fluorine, which is present over here, is the most strongest electronegative atom. You do not have to remember their values. You'll always be given if you ever needed to. But you have to do a comparison of uh, electronegativity between two elements. Uh, based on the location of those elements. So if I asked you between uh, hydrogen and fluorine, which is the most electronegative atom, then because fluorine is here, so this would be the most ele electronegative atom. The more electronegative atom will have a partial charge because this covalent bond is going to be polar. Um, for example, another example we want to do is um, hydrogen and oxygen. Um, so let's just do it over here. For example, a bond between uh, hydrogen and oxygen, because you see a lot of these bonds in biology and chem again and chemistry. Uh, they're they're both non-metals, so this bond is definitely a polar, uh, uh, definitely a covalent bond. However, the electron cloud is sort of in this pattern. So the electron which is present here is shared more by the oxygen atom equally. So because of this uh, unequal distribution, uh, the, uh, the oxygen atom will have a slight negative charge. So it will have what we call as a partial symbol of negative, And this will be partial 
positive. Now this symbol that I'm drawing over here is the it's the it's the delta sign, and it is the um, it is the symbol for um, the unequal distribution. And whenever you have polar charges, um, if I had an example, for example, um, hydrogen and hydrogen, then that would be a nonpolar bond. Nonpolar because there is no there is no unequal distribution. The electrons are equally distributed. So a polar covalent bond will always results due to unequal distribution of electrons. Uh, uh, there is um, one atom or one um, uh, one nucleus which has which has more strength to pull the shared electron pair towards itself and the other um, uh, atom because it's away from the electron uh, will have more positive charge on it so it's not really an ionic bond but it's an un it results because of the unequal uh, sharing of electrons so this concludes our uh, chapter 4